students welcome back to your english class today we are going to take a new chapter take page number 40 chapter number 8 moving to the secret annex during world war 2 what was the period of world war 2 1939 to 1945 the nazis were a political party led by adolf hitler in germany you might know who was adolf hitler right okay he led the nazis the political party nazis in germany it was led by adolf hitler they believed that the aryan race was superior to all others and had a deep hatred for the jewish community thousands of innocent jewish people were tortured and killed the nazis also took over other countries in europe during the war the jews in those countries went into hiding to protect their families and their lives okay at that time they believed that the aryan race they were superior to all others and they nazis had a deep hatred for the jewish community okay and a lot of thousands of thousands of innocent jewish people were tortured and killed by the nazis okay which was led by hitler and they also took over the countries in europe during the war during the second world war and a lot of jews in those countries uh the countries which was took un- taken over by the nazis a lot of jews from that countries went to hide to protect their families and their lives lives okay a 13 year old girl anne frank was one among the jews who had to leave her home during the war but anne kept a diary which where she recorded her thoughts and the events that were happening around her from the letters written in her diary we get to see what life was like for a jewish family in europe during those times here are a few early diary entries from july 1942 okay there was a small girl a 13 year old girl what was her name anne frank okay and she was one of the few family who went to hide from their home she went hiding with her family she went to hide to protect herself from the nazi party she had to leave her home during the war and she had a diary with her she kept a diary with her and written all her thoughts and the things happened during those times okay we can see from her diary writings what the life of a jewish family was like in europe during the times of the war okay here are some diary writings of her from july 1942 sunday morning 5 July 1942 Dear Kitty our examination results are were announced I couldn't have hoped for better they were certainly pleased at home although my parents don't care a bit whether my reports are good or bad as long as I'm well and happy my mister ga margot has her report too brilliant as usual daddy has been at home a lot lately as there is nothing for him to do at business When we walked across our little square together a few days ago daddy began to talk of us going into hiding yes and he said you know what that we have been taking food clothes furniture to other people for more than a year now we don't want our belongings to be seized by the germans but we certainly don't want to be captured ourselves so we shall disappear of our own accord and not wait until they come and fetch us now 
on sunday morning of 5th, 5th july it was sunday 5th july 1942 now she calls the diary as kitty and she writes the diary starting dear kitty okay now she is telling that her their examination results are announced and their her parents are not at all bothered about that her sister margaret was also having a brilliant result as usual now daddy came home and he told them that about they are going to hide going into hiding and before being caught by the germans they want to disappear or hide by themselves daddy when would that be he spoke so seriously that i grew very anxious don't you worry about it we shall arrange everything make the most of your carefree young life while you can oh may the fulfillment of those some rewards remain for far distant yet yours am now he is asking he is ask she is asking him when they are going to leave or when they are going to hide and he told him so he told her to get ready with and to take all the things or to arrange all the things she can do wednesday 8 july 1942 dear kitty years seem to have passed between sunday and now but i am still alive kitty now first diary writing here was on 5th july and next is the diary entry of 8 july now she tells that she felt the day between sunday and wednesday as a year has passed by that is the main thing daddy says i will begin by telling you what happened on sunday afternoon and that is the main thing she tells to the diary she writes in the diary and she writes in the diary that she will tell what happened on the sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock someone rang the front door bell margaret appeared at the kitchen door the ss has sent a call up notice for daddy she was sworn it was a great shock to me a call up everyone knows what that means concentration camps and lonely cells of course he won't go declared margaret mummy has gone to the van dams to discuss whether we should move into our hiding place tomorrow the van dams are going with us so we shall be seven in all mummy and mr van dam came in and closed the door behind them margaret and i were sent out of the room mr van dam walked to talk to mummy alone wanted to talk to mummy alone what happened on that sunday afternoon they heard a rang bell rang at the front door bell at the front front door at 3 o'clock they heard someone rang the front door bell and margaret her sister appeared there and there was a call up notice for the daddy and they were in a great shock call up means issued call up notice of the jews who they wanted to question okay then they are sent to a concentration camp and the most of the concentration camps were created by the nazis during the world war 2 and they there were the places where they tortured and killed the jewish people in large numbers so they were in a great shock to hear that when the when their daddy got the call up notice and of course he won't go there who told her sister told and mummy has gone to van dance to discuss uh whether she, they have to move tomorrow to the hiding place 
and who all are there the vandans are also going with them then there will be seven at all mummy and mr vandan came in close the door behind margaret and i were sent out of the room mr vandan wanted to talk to mummy alone mr vandan came there with mummy and they closed the door and she wanted to talk with they wanted to talk each other to alone in our bedroom margaret told me that the call up was not for daddy but for her i was more frightened than ever and began to cry margaret a 16 would they really take girls of that age way alone margaret and i began to pack some of our most vital belongings into a pool satchel the first thing i put in was the diary then hair colors handkerchiefs school books a comp old letters i put in the craziest things with the idea that we are going into hiding now from the bedroom what her sister told she was actually the call up notice was not for her daddy but it was not it was for her and it made and frank more frightened and she began to cry margaret is just 16 years old and she is wondering would the nazis take the girls of that age to the concentration camps and what they did they began to pack their belongings in the school satchel and what are the things and put it inside the school satchel first first thing was the diary then her hair colors handkerchiefs school books a comb and all it is she know she was having the idea that they were going for hiding but she had put all the craziest things inside that into hiding when how where now she was thinking they don't know they don't know or they do not have any idea where they are going when they are going and how they are going mummy called me at 5:30 the next morning warm rain fall fell steadily all day we took we put on heaps of clothes as if we are going to the north pole no jew in our station would have dreamed of going out with a suitcase full of clothing i had on two vest three pairs of pants a dress on top of that a skirt jacket lace up shoes woolly cap scarf and still more at 7:30 the door closed behind us morty my little cat was only creature to whom i said farewell she would have a good home with the neighbors we only wanted to get away only escape and arrive safely nothing else can you tomorrow yours am now we all had packed all their bags and the next morning at 5:30 mummy where mummy had called her her and there was warm rain outside all day there was warm rain falling and they were wearing a lot of clothes by themselves as if they are going to the north pole or a, a snowy region they were wearing a lot of clothes and no use in that uh, situation would have dreamed of going out with a suitcase full of clothing she had wear two vest three pairs of pants a dress on top of that a skirt jacket lace up shoes woolly cap scarf and still more or worn by her mochi and at 7:30 they left the house and she said farewell to only one only to the cat she told the farewell also thought that the cat little cat named mochi will have good home with good neighbors only they wanted to escape only the and frank and her family want to escape from there and she stopped writing and next else on thursday 9 july 1942 dear kitty 
So we walked in the pouring rain, each with a school satchel and shopping bag filled to the brim, with all kinds of things drawn together anyhow. We got sympathetic looks from people on their way to work. Now they had walked in the rain, they have started walking in the rain. All the thing that they had in their hand was the school satchel and shopping bag full. The shopping bags and the school sachet was full. And they got sympathetic means kind and understanding looks from the people on their way. All the people looked at them sympathetically on their way to work. Only when we were on the road did mummy and daddy begin to tell me bits and pieces about the plan. For months now, many of our goods had been sent away and they were sufficiently ready for us to have gone into hiding of our own accord on 16 July. The plan had to be speeded up by 10 days because of the call up. Our quarters would not be so well organized but we had to make the best of it the hiding place itself would be in the building where daddy has his office on their way to the hiding place they mommy and daddy told her about the plan their plans to go for hiding they have been sending their goods from months to get ready for their stay in the hiding place but actually they had planned to go on 16 July but because of the uh, call up notice they had to be they had to stay, speed up 10 days before they actually they have planned and it is not well organized okay and the hiding place is on the same building where her daddy has his office. The right hand door leads to a secret annex to one would never ever guess that there would be so many door rooms hidden behind the plain grey door. There is a little step in front of the door and when you are inside then you are inside. Okay. Then the right hand door leads to a secret annex. Leads to a secret annex. And nobody could guess. A lot of doors. Many doors are hidden behind the plain grey door. There. And there is a little step in front of the door. And then you are. Then they can enter inside. There is a steep staircase immediately opposite the entrance. To its left, a tiny passage brings you into a room which is to become the Frank family. family's bed sitting room next to a smaller room which will be the study and bedroom for the two young ladies of the family. To the right is a little room without windows containing the wash basin. One door from it links to the toilet with another door leading to markets and my room. Up the next flight of stairs there is a big light room, the bedroom and kitchen for the one dan couple. A tiny little corridor will open will become Peter Van Dan's bedroom. Then just as on the lower landing there is a large attic. So there you are. I have introduced you a say beautiful secret annex now she is introducing how the house the secret annex looks like she is introducing or she is describing how where is the room where is the wash basin where is the study room and where is the sitting and bedroom for them and the van van family okay this is adapted from the diary of a young girl by annie frank okay that's all about the story. Next chapter. Chapter number 9, page number 47. Oh, Mary, go and call the cattle home. And the cattle, and call the cattle home, and call the cattle home. Across the sands of tea. The western wind was wild and dank with foam, and all alone one she. 
The western tide crept up along the sand and over and over the sand and round and round the sand as far as I could see. The rolling mist came down and hid the land and never home came she. Weed or fish or floating hair, a tress of golden hair. It drowned maiden's hair above the nets at sea. Was never salmon yet that shone so fair. Among the sticks of tea, they robbed her in across the rolling form, the cruel crawling form, the cruel hungry form, to her grave beside the sea. But still the boatman hear her call the cattle home across the sands of tea. Charles Kingsley. Okay, this is a poem written by Charles Kingsley. What is the title of the poem? Sands of Tea. This poem tells us a story about a little girl who was sent by her ma- parents to call the cattle to or to bring the cattle home before it rained. Her name was Mary. She went alone in search of the cattle. She went to the shore of the sand of D. Dusk was falling by then and the day was dark and me and the tides were rising. As soon as she landed the shores of the to reach the land on the to reach the land on the other side, her eyes were covered with mist and she could not see where the land lays. And before that the tide took her away. She was pulled into the sea by the tide. And later the fisherman uh, found her body uh, while when they went to catch salmon in the sea. Her shining golden tresses, tresses means long curl of hair, and they brought her to the shore where her grave lost. But even now, when the fishermen went to the sea to catch the fish, they can still hear the call of the the sound of Mary calling for her cattle. And this is the story. Read the poem. This poem is written by Charles Kingsley.